put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Paranormal Activity The Ghost Dimension in 3D A small family has recently moved into a new house in Palo Alto, California. The they come up upon these tapes of the Katie and Christy as children and the it's very clear that in these tapes they are being they're being guided there's something you know that immediately there's like is, is she hypnotized is what is you know some something's going on there and it seems like the it seems like Christy is breaking the fourth wall she is apparently describing a room that seems to be the the bedroom of the the daughter of the family and you know this is this is pretty creepy seeing as how not only is this pre-recorded that they're you know they're watching these tapes but the tapes are 20 years old they they look up the the you know they 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 also find this big you know old VHS camera which is there's there's something special about it and you know they they take it apart and look up online and just yeah there's there's something strange and it is apparently capable of spirit photography seeing what you know what is invisible to the naked eye and Thus, we, you know, breaking the fourth wall on, and this uh, spirit photography gives us new, two new things that weren't in Paranormal Activity, the, the series before, these, you know, creative and clever elements, and they're used really well. The, the camera, of course, also helps with the whole found footage film logic, you know, why are they filming this they set up the camera so that they can see you know they they there's a line apparently only the camera and Leela the daughter can see this so yeah they they put up the camera to try to find out what is going on what is this yeah what it what and the yeah and you know there's of course also this this also helps explain why you know why someone doesn't just put down the camera when there's you know danger because you might not be able to see the danger without the camera and you know the there there are not that many cases of like characters pointing out I'm being filmed. Why am I being filmed? That is, you know, but yeah. And as for why this is released to theaters, you know, can, if you go by the conceit that this is, of course, all actual, this actually happened, and, you know, someone, I don't know who, edited all this together and it's now being released to theaters. Nope, that's just, that's, there's still no explanation for the, you know, in, in like the first, maybe the first two, you can kind of say, oh, maybe, yeah, from there on out, it's kind of, 
yeah, they, they, that's just not a question that's going to be answered. Unless, of course, I suppose it is possible that just they, you know, they now want us to know what has happened. And yeah, that, that might actually explain it. If, yeah. But, yeah, the, you know, it's, it's, it's spooky with this, you know, they, they, see these tapes, they see this, you know, these two children being taught supernatural abilities by their grandmother. Keep that in mind the next time you complain about your mother or mother-in-law giving the kids too much sugar when they stay over. And this one, the, the, there are not too many cameras, there's a quite fitting amount there is no useless angle. I'm looking at you, Paranormal Activity 2. And the... Yeah, it's... it's It again has this theme of, you know, parents protecting their daughter. And, you know, it's... It's not exactly the first time these films have handled the subject of protecting children from the world, you know, it has kind of, you know, out of the six films, there's three that don't have it, I guess, yeah, so it's not exactly two, there's two that don't have it, and one of them doesn't even have any, you know, child characters at all, so, yeah, it's not, it's not, you know, training new ground in that particular d department, but there is a, you know, they, they add some new flavor to it, and it's, um, yeah, there's, there's, yes, there, there is this idea that, that maybe they are losing their daughter to something that, you know, the, yeah, more, more than that she's necessarily in physical danger, or that, you know, yeah, it seems like they might be losing her. It, it doesn't seem like she's not particularly afraid of what's going on. She is eerily calm about it. And, uh, you know, in, in general, the, the series has this theme of men trying to protect their family from the, this, this intangible danger, trying to live up to the role as protector of the family, which is, of course, somewhat old-fashioned, and it's not, you know, today it's not necessarily you know, it's not the man, there's not even necessarily a man in the picture, and that's not automatically a problem, but it is kind of an, you know, an, an old idea, so it, it works for thematic material. The adults take the paranormal seriously. There's, there's no, it's actually like, like anyone who's bothered by the, and I understand, I, I, found that frustrating as well, especially in the fourth one. In this, it's like, that, yeah, there's something going on, what, what exact, we gotta figure out what to do, you know, about it, and we, and they're trying to figure out what exactly is going on, and, and something, you know, but there's no, like, oh, that was, you know, that was just something, that, don't worry about it, I'm sure that's, you know, yeah. The fourth one got pretty crazy with that. Yeah, the, the, and it's also, the supernatural comes up really early. Like, we're talking one or two scenes in, we've just barely met these characters when there's first some kind of, you know, when something happens or a scene or the like that is, 
clear evidence that something, you know, not not just something kind of creepy or no, no, there's something going on here that we don't quite understand, and we gotta find out what. And I suppose that's more or less what I should say about that. I'm gonna jump right into the last minute notes before I say too much more. This movie is amazing. This is this movie is so much fun and so scary and just yeah, the the they say this is gonna be the last one. I really hope that that's true because this is this is such a good way to end it. And you know, with with this kind of thing, you know, six films and you know, all one overarching story and you know, is like do, do they really need to draw this? Obviously, you know, anyone who's looked into the history of you know, looked at what actually happened with the first film, how exactly it came to be in theaters and the whole obviously it didn't start out planned. Like, you know, just look at the original ending to the first one. But the fact that they did draw it out over six movies, other than making the money, does actually make sense. I the the way that this ties everything up and actually there's there are too many ideas and too much plot for it to have fit into one movie unless I, Christopher Nolan could do it but you know like not in in it's just it's there's there's so much and there are so many if you know I've watched all of them and yeah, it. I guess. Does everything pay off? I, maybe not every last little thing, but every major thing that was set up is followed up on and gets paid off. The. And you know some some an issue that's come up with the various films is this thing of you know are they you know are they actually trying to keep you know are they doing enough to keep the family safe you know shouldn't they be taking this you know seemingly paranormal activity more seriously and in this they do in this they they generally they take they take precautions they take steps in trying to protect the family and you know they they get help from the outside and you know when when they first get you know they they contact a priest one of the first things he tells them is it's not going to help anything for you to move away from here the you know the this is not about the house it's about you so if you no matter what you do, no matter where you go, it's just going to keep falling. So, you know, there's, yeah. And, yeah, it's, it's, which, again, and, and the, the first one did that as well. So, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's not something that you can, you know, you, you can't just move to a different house and it'll, and that'll help. There's, you know, the, these films always find some nice, creepy things to put as, you know, as as nice background, as, as ambiance. And this has a lava lamp, which just inherently is creepy. You know, the way the, the, the blobs move and form and, yeah. You know, and, and it's not like, if you just see one in a room, it's just, yeah, that's fine. But... When it's dark and it's like that's the only thing providing light, it's creepy, especially in a movie called Paranormal Activity and where there's clearly paranormal activity. And yeah, you know, over the course of it, it seems, you know, Leela, you know, she seems, you know, she's like seven or eight, something like that. And she seems, you know, 
she seems distant she's she's kind of un unresponsive like it's you know there are times where it's almost like she doesn't even perceive her parents anymore and it's it's really creepy it's fantastic acting and the the something that's very clever in this you know there's always with with each of these they try to find at least one gimmick that they can really use you know and the first one it was just the the straightforward thing and each after that has has you know at least tried to have some kind of you know yeah thing that that you could point to that particular film and and that's where that is. And this one really uses the spirit photography camera immensely well. Because every time that it's the only thing that can see what's actually going on. So if something is going on, but then, you know, you maybe need to see the, the full, you maybe need a wide shot, cuts to a different camera suddenly you can't see the the you know what what might be going on or maybe the camera just isn't quite pointed in the right direction that you wish it was maybe something is you know just a little bit off and, and it's just it's so well done. and and then something that's also really effective is that you can see some of this stuff because you're seeing what the camera is seeing but the characters can't so you know where in the others, it tends to be like you can kind of, well, yeah, you, you can maybe see something moving behind them and it'd be like, well, you know, now it might be like in front of them and they can't see it. And, you know, you're like, screw, get, uh, get away from there. And just, yeah, it's, it's really, really, yeah, it's, it's immensely well used. And this, you know, there are several hallways in the the house as usual it is a nice suburban house so yeah they you know they, they got the the latino spin-off out of their system so back to white suburbia and yeah there are some hallways in this house and yeah hallways are fodder for horror because it is just yeah, the, the, at any point, excuse me, during this hallway, something might show up, excuse me, or be behind you, or something might happen, and just, you know, every little step you take, and, and, yeah, it, it uses it quite well. And this takes place near Christmas. It's it's set in December, and the you know there's this big Christmas tree you know again suburbia it's it's a you know, huge inside Christmas tree and it's you know and and this is one of the families that actually somehow avoided that curse they they hung up the lights and they worked that's how you know that something supernatural is going on and this this christmas tree is lit all around the clock so when you see like a wide shot of just like the you know the the living room of the house you just see this big tree just lit and suddenly it becomes really eerie because it's the only thing that's you know the it's pretty much the only thing providing any light and again something like this can suddenly become very creepy if something clearly paranormal is going on around it you know the the the, the very first film made it creepy to go to sleep you know you you see someone's bedroom and you're like that could be my bedroom how can i be sure that stuff like that isn't going on when i'm sleeping in my bedroom you know and yeah, it it each of these you know have have that 
aspect that that you know places that you know that could be where you're you know living or that could be your living room while you're asleep or just while you aren't home and you don't know if if stuff like this is going on the, you you do see some tapes from you know yeah some of the tapes you see recorded in the third movie so yeah and one of the there's there's this young woman that's you know I'm not 100% I feel like they're she's a friend of either the wife or the husband I'm, I'm not 100% sure but she's a friend and she has this kind of alternative you know Eastern philosophies kind of thing going on you know one of the first things you know almost immediately after we meet her she's like talking about feng shui and stuff and she's the one who points out oh this camera this is spirit photography you know and yeah so so again right there you know they they already immediately have a character who kind of has an idea of what might be going on you know so it's not just like i mean these these are not really people but you know that's that's again part of the the hook of paranormal activity these these are normal people this is this is you this is essentially you and this could happen to you and you know in their midst they have this character who has some idea that maybe something is going you know so she, and and it, that maybe also helps encourage maybe say you know you're not crazy I've read about this stuff this this is this is legit and and again this is you know she's like a friend of the family it's not some you know random babbling stranger it's you know they they trust her and yeah and the there's this early thing where you know Leela she's like she's seven or eight she still likes if mommy and daddy maybe check for monsters before they tuck her in and so they do and they do that with the camera and you can see where that's going and the there's this I, I may not have mentioned the the feng shui woman her name is skylar and the movie is an hour and 25 minutes not counting the end credits and the i suppose that's it the the mythology here is expanded upon and more explained we get more of a, a sense of what you know what has been going on and what sort of what was it building towards and yeah this gives closure to the yeah the the and there's no real sequel baiting i mean i guess it's possible they make more but as far as i understand like producer people have said this is going to be the last one and this is a great way to end it and it's not like you know it's it's not a it's not a letdown it's not a disappointment it's a pretty <laughs> pretty terrifying I'm gonna have trouble sleeping tonight, and I am not looking forward to turning off all these wonderful lights. But yeah, this movie has an ending, and yeah, it it is. I I recently watched a like a pitch for a, a different take on a paranormal Adi Shankar, if that's how you pronounce it, you know help make dread help produce dread I think you know he does pitch videos with actual filmmakers who want to make 
films that they maybe not don't have a huge chance of doing but would be really cool and they pointed out that the paranormal activity movies are basically just you know the first two acts that it kind of ends where you would normally expect an act three and that is basically true of this one there is a it it does yeah the 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 very ending is you know yeah it's it's somewhat like the the others the you know a very very sudden ending but and one that really you know leaves an impact and in this case actually gives a yeah it's it's a full on ending it's not just but what happens next and the the yeah the the series has always been this you know build up of atmosphere you know with each film starting anew on that building atmosphere from the ground up and over the course of the films gradually telling a story and it's you know it's kind of the thing of well if they suddenly have you know instead of just gradual build up of atmosphere if they suddenly have like really really clear and widespread paranormal activity you know and the a lot of story that that would seem out of place and I worry that that might be the case here but instead it's just that we get a better look at the activity and again we the audience see things that the the characters might not you know because it's 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 a paranormal activity movie so you know that there are going to be cameras on when people are sleeping so the cameras are just set to record so even if like maybe mom comes in and checks if there's a maybe there's a a noise from you know around her, her daughter's bedroom or something and we see it from the the spirit photography camera so we can see that there's something right there right next to but she can't and we're in no position to to, to you know as much as we you know yell get away it's right there it's just yeah we just have to sit and watch as this yeah and it's it's a um, story-wise there is some exposition and like you know research again and yeah it's it's again you know suddenly there's a bunch of exposition but it's not like too much it doesn't feel this is very much still a paranormal activity movie it doesn't feel out of place for the series and excuse me the the plot there is excuse me is very it's it quite easy to follow and it makes sense and that's again something you know some of the twists along the way have been kind of head scratching and yeah i i would say that this helps make more sense of them <laughs> I'm gonna go into detail about this in the thoughts video. I don't think there's that much left that can't be explained. And once you've watched this entire movie, I would say that most of what has been, you know, yeah, most of the questions over the course of the films are indeed answered. Can be, you know, you can, yeah, you can get the answers from comparing all the films, com you know, putting together all the details of what you know and what yeah and it's 
yeah, the you know there are again twists and yeah, with with this one there isn't really it it doesn't really confuse where four and the marked ones yeah with those the the twist was like wait what and yeah in in this the twist is far more clear and the yeah i honestly Maybe I'm completely wrong about this, but I feel like once they had made, you know, once once they realized that the first was the first was a success and they could make more movies out of this, I think that there's, I think that what they did was sit down, write a full story, and then chop it into, you know, and and with with detail and and you know twists and yeah and chop the the you know chop it into bits and then insert the various you know details and story threads and characters and such in the various films and you know just make make sure that only once you've watched this one does it all make sense and yeah i mean again maybe they didn't but I was really I if you had told me before I watched this that everything would make sense in the series I would not have believed you that is just I I had no idea that I don't know it is possible that they just they were making it up as they went along and then here at the end they managed to tie it all together but yeah I I feel like it I'm very satisfied with the answers. You know, that's for sure. The So yeah, once we know what you know, as as they say all the activity will be revealed and you know, you'll you'll see yeah, once once we realize what is going on it makes sense. You, you, uh, yeah. Once, once you've seen the whole movie, you, you understand. And <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have some nightmares. And the the film is I don't think it would be I, I think it would be too much if you watch just this one you know if you if you're coming to this and you didn't really care about the others but you feel like this looks kind of cool you can watch it I mean it does basically say all the things that you know, yeah, it, it's 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 Avengers two in that regard, and pretty much only that regard. You you can pick everything up from you know they like I said they they watch some of the tapes that are part of the movie that is the third movie, and they yeah I mean the the characters are realizing these things that the that that you know the the viewer already knows and this doesn't like you know they're not like spending forever just you know once once they get a piece of information they process it and move on you know it's not like that can not possibly be the case you know they just yeah and the yeah yeah basically all in all you you can watch just this one but I would say that it's it's a lot easier to follow and you get a better the scope is clearer if you've watched the other ones but like I think it's on the 
the IMDb fact for the third movie. It says that the first three movies you can watch in any order because they kind of, they all have pieces of the puzzle, but none of them have the whole thing, and that is very true. But when, once you get to the fourth one, you you should probably have watched the first three, and, you know, then with the marked ones, there's... That one also somewhat gets by on not necessarily having watched it's it's you know it's the spin-off so but yeah it's I I would say overall it is best to watch them you know just in a row in the way that but yeah you know when when it comes to the first three definitely watch them in any order and personally I would recommend watching the first five before you watch this but I do kinda hope that some people go into it just watching this and just not knowing anything at all about the other movies because I think that would like like I said with, with Avengers 2 it's it's one heck of a ride if you have no like yeah, if you have no prior knowledge, if you really don't know, because, you know, those of us who sit down to this and have watched the first five, you know, every single time we see a little thing, it's like, oh, that's actually that, you know, and if you, yeah, if, if you just watch this and pick up everything from, from this, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's gonna be pretty, it's, it's gonna be fairly dense, like I said, it's, it's, it makes sense that they split this up into six, or rather, five sequels, since the first one wasn't made for sequels anyway. But, yeah, there, there was a lot to set up, and, yeah, it's, yeah. Now, the four members of the Fleece or fleet fleece, I think, family are Ryan, a video game developer. I'm on, I'm not entirely certain. Yeah, there's there's like a little, you know, one little bit where we see him actually sitting and working on it, but otherwise, and it's not really important. It's just he's pretty rich, otherwise he couldn't afford this place. But yeah, and you know, it also kind of. Yeah, he gets to work from home, and he knows computers. That's essentially the the really important parts of that. And the his his wife, who is a stay-at-home mom, you know, she's a little more serious than him, a little older, and you know, I mean, the way he describes her is on the go. She does yoga. You know, she's very loving, but also very mature. Six-year-old, I believe the wiki said, six-year-old Leela is, you know, fearless, opinionated tomboy. And Ryan's brother Mike is, <laughs> he's a little goofy. And he has this kind of, when the film starts, he has been broken up with by his ex. He's not a big fan of his ex, and yeah, it's like, you know, he was he was going to just be there for, you know, he's, he's kind of moving in temporarily, because, yeah, you know, he doesn't have a, <laughs> yeah, he was just broken up with, and, you know, the wife isn't crazy about it, but, okay, and, then we have, you know, add to that, add to those four, we have Skylar. And the, I suppose you could say that if, if there is a skeptic in the cast, it would be Mike. But, yeah, that is pretty much it. And, you know, the these films do tend to have a skeptic and the skeptic turns out to
not be quite, excuse me, accurate about, yeah, their, their skepticism of what's going on. The, the characters have personality and some development and, yeah, you know, I think Mike's gonna get on a lot of people's nerves. I was fine with him, but, you know, he's, yeah, I'm, I'm not, not a big fan, but I didn't mind him too much, and he does provide some comic relief, which, you know, the, the film is quite scary, and it's good to have just genuine, and, and we do, of course, have some jump scares again, but I'll get into that, but, yeah, the, you know, unlike the Mark ones, this doesn't have any characters that you're, like, gonna be just really remembering for a long time after, but, yeah, you know, they're, they're likable enough, and the, just, yeah, it, you know, they're, you can tell them apart, and that's really the, the, there's, it's not really about the characters. And the, you know, they, they feel like real people, the, you know, it doesn't feel like they're acting, and the scenes don't tend to feel staged. There is at least one, you know, really awkward exposition -y line where, you know, it's like, I think, yeah, it's the, the mother talking to Leela, and it's like, don't you want to go play on the seesaw? That was your favorite thing, and it's like... <laughs> This is, you know, she knows if it's her favorite thing, you know, just, yeah, it's it's kind of awkward, -y, although, to be fair, it is a little more understandable when it's a kid. It was more the, you know, what do you mean, but I'm your best friend. That was especially, yeah, and again, unlike two, it does not have too many characters, and the, again, the, the creepy kid thing, not new to the series, but, again, I feel like they, they do something new with it, with, with her being just genuinely, you know, just they, they, it seems like they're losing her, just, you know, it's, it's not like she is actually... You know, it's not like she's going into, uh, like, a, a trance or something, or not. Well, yeah, it, it doesn't seem like, she doesn't seem like she doesn't understand what's going on around her, or, you know, but just, it seems like she's no longer really perceiving her parents, or really, you know... Or that their opinions and emotions and such have as great sway on her as they used to. And the the three D, I was. You know, I, I was wondering how that was going to work with the whole, you know, found footage thing of, like, you know, 3D is kind of, uh, it's it's for putting the, the audience member there. It's for making the, you know, the, the the fiction blend in with our reality and in these movies that fiction is being presented to us or you know yeah it's presented to us as not fiction and what we're seeing through the camera is something seen through okay you know what what we're seeing on the screen was filmed by a camera it's we're, we're supposed to we're aware that it's a camera so yeah, and then, you know, it maybe occurred to me that it would be like, you know, breaking the fourth wall to, you know, to us as well. And not only 
in the film itself and you know might it only be for the 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 camera the the spirit photography camera and yeah it's it's basically that the spirit photography camera It said very early on that it's probably seeing into another dimension. And that actually kind of opens that, that door. So the moment that you see something through the spirit photography camera, that door is open. So when we're watching it in the theater, yeah, it's, it's, you know, we, we, not, not only can we see what is in this other dimension, it's, it, the, the other dimension is, is right there, you know, ar around us. And that's a really, really great idea. And yeah, I'm really glad that they didn't like, I mean, it's not like 3D was just, you know, just now made, like, popular or something, you know, it was on Avatar in 2009, so they've had a few years, and, you know, major movies have, you know, there, there are major movies that have had 3D since, like, 2011, you know, the, 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 the MCU films have had 3D pretty much, yeah, and, yeah, the, the, they, they use it very well, and it is indeed very, you know, it's, it is, it is very much showy, and very much draws attention to itself, and it is indeed only in these scenes, so, you know, if you, if you go by how much of the film is in 3D, not very much, there's fairly little of the film that is actually in 3D, but, I would still definitely, if you're going to watch this movie, and I think you should, if, you know, if it is at all the kind of thing that appeals to you, and you ever watch 3D, I would definitely recommend you watch it in 3D, because that really does, you know, it's, it's always been that we could kind of tell that there was something more there, that, you know, we would maybe see what they didn't and yeah here you know it's, it's, you know if they're looking through the viewfinder they can see it too but it's it's more than just that we can see it we can we can pretty much reach out and touch it and vice versa it can reach out and touch us and that is where you are really, really glad that you are only in a theater seat and that this, yeah. And the, the, it's, 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 it's really, really effective. And the, this doesn't really get repetitive. I've always found most of the time, you know, you could, You'd argue that the fourth one, but you know, mostly in these, it, yeah, it effectively builds. And though we may see the same thing several times, you know, maybe at first it'll seem innocent enough, but then a little bit of a hint, and then bigger and bigger, and suddenly something really big. And yeah, and it uses that really well again. And the, I didn't particularly find these scares to be cheesy. There are some jump scares. They're mostly earned. They're mostly the kind where you can tell that something is going to happen. You just don't know exactly when. And that the thing happening actually means something. It, you know it might lead to a new discovery or it might really have consequences and you know but it's it's not just there to fill a scare quota 
and yeah, it's you know the the scares again. You know, there's there's some subtle little hints. It it builds and just you know things that are are creepy and it it uses tension and suspense really well and the the sound you know the sound design is a huge part of what makes it work and you know using letting letting our imagination do the work and having these you know slight and impossible movements you know that we see where we can tell this is you know this is not of this world and some of that is of course now a now we do see more but there's still a basically we never see everything. We're always just seeing some part of the whole and we are yeah, it's it's we we still have to try to you know put in the the you know missing piece fill in the missing pieces ourselves and figure out exactly you know where does this start and where does it end and what exactly is going going on with it and yeah it you know with with this kind of thing you might you know i kind of worried that it would lose its effect that it would be too too detailed where the the series has thrived on having very little just you know you you don't know exactly what's going on and you don't see very much it it still works really well and there is a what you what you do see still really feeds your imagination and there's still you know you're still not seeing like everything that is going on and you still have to piece together there's a very early example which again isn't really a spoiler is that basically the first time he fires up the spirit photography camera before he's really looked at it, he just starts it up and tries to see does it even work because he's a computer guy and yeah just turns on let's see if it works you know so yeah and he I don't want to give too much away about it but basically he sees something strange and then it's time to tuck Layla in so they go do that and then he goes back to where he saw the thing and he tries to find it and he can't see it anymore so whatever it was it moved and it's not you know he doesn't think that up oh, it was just like you know eh, glitch or something you know he he looks into if it could be that but yeah he's so so he's like he realized it's it's there's still something somewhere around here and it's that kind of thing where again it's only the camera that can really pick up we never fully know and excuse me that is really excuse me the, the core of this we never we're never sure you know it's never a guy with a weapon you know that that is scary that can definitely be scary but it doesn't have this the the element of the intangible and this in spite of showing us more and giving us more detailed more clear indications of the supernatural 
or ones that you can see even without like looking at you know before it was like well you know they destroyed this with you know you we can't figure out how it did this but in just no time at all it destroyed this thing or you know here you can see it even beyond the the mark it leaves on things around the the house and such and yeah it's it's still just little enough that we're never quite sure and uh, yeah and the this is paced quite well i felt like it just very nicely kept building and building there's no real like yeah you know just i mean it 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 got going pretty quickly with you know introducing well there's something weird going on so let's try to figure out what it is and then gradually ramping that tension up and once it was like okay this is this is real this this is something they need to deal with yeah it kept being at that level it kept being something that you know it there was never a period of time where it felt like suddenly the focus was on something else or yeah it it worked quite well that and yeah we do still have sounds and such that are that go unexplained and the there's a clear increase in activity over the course of the film which makes sense i won't say exactly why now this one is directed by the editor who edited you know paranormal activity 2 and each of them from the you know it, i like how with each of these they like you know I don't remember exactly which one, but one of them was directed by the, the writer of several of these, and, you know, just, yeah, it's, I, I like how they did, and it makes a lot of sense to have, for example, the writer or the editor direct a movie because they they really understand it, they, they delved into it, and, yeah, and it doesn't feel, it, it doesn't feel like a first effort director, you know, you yeah, you, you can't tell that this guy hasn't directed before if, you know, if you didn't know. Now, this one does have the, you know, the, the, some jump cuts and some of them are, of course, used to, you know, for, for jump scares, you know, suddenly it cuts to something with more activity without it even being necessarily something scary it's just you know they you know they were filming this thing and then they stopped filming it, and then we pick up as they're like carrying the camera or going into a new situation and it's you know jolts us but yeah it it's not too bad it's you know yeah it's certainly better than in in some of the others and the you know we again have the the fast forwarding of you know footage where you know something happened and, and then you see you know and it just kept being in that state or maybe you know yeah and and then it stops fast forwarding and just plays regularly and you know and there are again creepy things that happen when we aren't looking or at least where we aren't and yeah the 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 sudden cuts away from the activity which have been in i think all since two and the thing with most of them is it doesn't really make sense that it's cutting away here it tends to because like i said there's there's they they direct the camera that that really the the spirit photography camera is directed at Leela's bed, which you know the 
Mike even points out, you know, oh, we're gonna so we're gonna watch your your kid sleep. That's not creepy at all. So yeah, it's I, I'm not sure a line like that has been in the other movies, but it's it's about time that it was. But yeah. The the sometimes they just have to cut away from that camera, even though it's you know it's it's the one that's showing you the activity, but it just doesn't quite get the full, you know, maybe you need to see something going on that that, that camera isn't capturing with its angle, so it cuts to the wide shot, and suddenly we can't see the activity that we could see through it, but we can see just a little further and something very important. It Again, it's a really, really clever device to have this, and yeah. And the, you know, we again have timestamps and dates and, as usual, the, the really creepy stuff tends to happen during the, the night, like, you know, late night, early morning hours kind of thing. And there is... In, in several of these, there have been trailer footage that isn't in the film itself. In this one, it's pretty much just lines that are different. But I will say, I mean, it's probably a good idea not to watch the trailers, at least not too close to when you watch it, because there are a few things that they show that you really shouldn't see before we watch the film, but yeah, the, the, there, there isn't really any footage, I'm pretty sure, in the trailer, in the main trailers, that isn't in the film, not that I can think of. And, you know, I was, when, when I reviewed the fourth one a few years ago, I I was working on the hypothesis that the even-numbered entries in this series suck. I'm very happy to announce that the this one broke that mold. Maybe maybe they did it intentionally, just so it could especially surprise people that this one, yeah, I mean. To briefly, I maintain the the first one is great. The third one is probably the best. I really don't think highly of the second one. The fourth one is bad. The marked ones is fun and really like trolly. Like they they have some stuff in there that's like, well, okay then. And this one, it's. It's up there as one of the best, I would say. It's... I'm not sure I can really rank them presently, but it is up there with the, the first and the third in just, yeah, top three of the six. And the, you know, this keeps to still, you know, like, sounds and music and such tends to be coming from an actual source you know they don't really add any and that's that's the really great thing some of the the some of what the, the spirit photography camera captures comes with its own sounds and that's not that's not right. in reality of course it is you know it's the editors putting in but in the, the reality of the film, that's not that someone edited that in. That's that when you are perceiving this alternate dimension, yeah, there are some noises along with the, the sights. And yeah, that, that is done very, very nicely. And yeah, again, otherwise, it is just, you know, the, the things you 
here in film are actually there. It's not, you know, they, they don't do a, a loud thud on the, the soundtrack that is for the audience only. And much like in, you know, some, something I feel that they've done well in each of these is that you know the geography of the, the house. It usually takes, you know, marked ones to this beyond, but usually it's mostly set in the house of the protagonists. And yeah, we, we get a quick video tour or we get a few, you know, so we have an idea of where something is or someone in relation to the others, which is very, very useful and used very well when someone is suddenly in a place that they really shouldn't be or how did they get there so fast and things like that. And we do have some very brutal, memorable, you know, both, yeah, some, some, some activity that is really horrifying and yeah, very nicely done on that. I've reviewed other parts of this franchise, the links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.